How now shall I introduce to you our honored guest this evening, the 14th Poet Laureate of the United States, Mr. Donald Hall. I could say that he is the author of 15 books of poetry, including his selected poems, White Apples and The Taste of Stone, which represents 60 years of writing. I could say that he has won the National Book Critics Circle Award, the Marshall Nation Award, the Los Angeles Times Book Award, the Lilly Prize, and two Guggenheim Fellowships for his poetry. I could also say, something I learned over dinner, that I believe he is the only poet to have a volume of poetry, in this case, without optioned for a movie. Um, I could say that he has written over 20 books of prose, including Willow Temple, New and Selected Stories, Breakfast Served Anytime, All Day, Essays About Poetry, and most recently, the memoirs, Unpacking the Boxes, The Life of a Poet, and The Best Day, The Worst Day, Life with Jane Kenyon. I could say that he has won a Caldecott Award for his wonderful children's story, Oxcart Man. I could say that he is obviously one of our nation's true tribe of men and women of letters. I could say also that he is co-founder of the Paris Review and coiner of the term the Mick Poem, which he used in 1983 to describe the homogeneity of our poetic culture, a homogeneity which still persists, though thanks to Mr. Hall's critique, perhaps not so monolithically. I could say that he is also a great lover of baseball, about which he has also written. All this is true, but he comes to us tonight to read from his poems and also from Jane Kenyon's poems about the experience of love and cancer. And it is that aspect of his long career as a writer that I'd like to address all too briefly. You will hear images from New England from the landscape um, around Eagle Pond Farm, New Hampshire, where Donald and Jane lived uh, and wrote together side by side, day by day, for 20 years. The pond itself, Mount Kearsarge, Jane's garden, and even particular trees, for instance, the popples, uh, come into this verse and become characters, really, of the poems. The landscape is movingly the permanent scrim against which generations of family members and their all too fleeting lives play out. Mr. Hall does not shy away from the grittiness of cancer, the harsh realities of the disease, either in his memoirs or even in his lyrics. Be prepared to be shocked. But there is also the antidote of wry, if grim, humor. For instance, after putting on a sterile outfit of hat, booties, gown, and gloves to visit Jane in her isolation unit after a bone marrow transplant, quote, Jane said he looked like a huge condom. <laughs> there are a lot of other great quotes, too, anyway, which he will give you. Uh, I believe that no poet since Thomas Hardy in his poems of 1912 to 13 has given us such an extended and nuanced portrait of the psychological complexities that surround the death of a loved one. Some of Mr. Hall's lines, indeed, in their juxtaposition of short indented lines against longer ones, and in their quick nonce rhyme schemes, actually recall Hardy's own verse. In some ways, Hardy presides over these poems, but Hall naturally moves beyond Hardy into his own particularly plain-spoken New England vision, replete with all the contemporary medical terminology of leukemia, blood oxygen numbers, and TBI, total body irradiation. The paradox that Hall everywhere explores is how it can be, quote, fitting and delicious to lose everything, and how that realization is an affirmation. After his reading, Mr. Hall has graciously consented to answer questions from the audience. There will be several traveling microphones that you can use to ask questions that you may have. After our Q&A, uh, Mr. Hall will sign books, which will be for sale outside Fowler Hall in the lobby. So, without further ado, please welcome Mr. Donald Hall, 14th Poet Laureate of the United States.
thank you. Thank you all. And uh, thanks certainly for this conference. I was delighted just now to witness the amalgamation of dance, music, and video. I've been to one of the, uh, the, the uh, exhibition in the uh, Union. I'll be to the others tomorrow. It's overwhelming. I feel, uh, well, delighted with your, uh, on, I'm honored uh, by the honors that you give me. I'm going to read uh, a few poems by Jane, Jane Kenyon to begin with. Uh, I had had uh, cancer earlier, as you've heard, but uh, 1989, I had, uh, colon cancer, and uh, then just uh, two and a half years later, early in, uh, in spring of 1992, that cancer metastasized to my liver, and I had half my liver removed. Uh, Jane was, of course, uh, uh, frantic and totally caring. Uh, when I came home, she bought a uh, massage table, a, a portable one, and every day tried to rub the cancer out. Uh, the surgeon had uh, told us uh, as I was getting ready to leave the hospital that uh, with men of my age with uh, this particular operation to remove half the liver, 30% um, were alive five years later. Jane and I were both uh, perhaps morbid types, but we took that as the absolute knowledge that I would be dead in a couple of years. Uh, she wrote uh, poems at that time. Some of them, when they came out later, seemed to be about herself. Uh, but when she was so sick with leukemia, uh, she could not write poems, with one sort of exception. But one that she wrote uh, after my can't liver operation, and uh, before she became ill, is pretty well known. It's called Otherwise. I got out of bed on two strong legs. It might have been otherwise. I ate cereal, sweet milk, ripe, flawless peach. It might have been otherwise. I took the dog uphill to the birch wood. All morning I did the work I love. At noon I lay down with my mate. It might have been otherwise. We ate dinner together at a table with silver candlesticks. It might have been otherwise. I slept in a bed in a room with paintings on the wall and planned another day just like this day. But one day I know it will be otherwise. When I uh, came back uh, from the hospital and uh, was taking uh, some chemo, uh, one day uh, Jane approached me sort of lying uh, in a darkened room, kind of exhausted and so on, and handed me a piece of paper. And she said, is it all right? Uh, she called me Perkins. Is it all right, Perkins? And this was a poem that uh, she uh, gave me. It's called Pharaoh. The future ain't what it used to be, said the sage of the New York Yankees as he pounded his mitt, releasing the red dust of the infield into the harshly illuminated evening air. Big hands, Man with, men with big hands make things happen. The 